What if I told you that K-pop isn't really dominating the music industry right now? Yeah, there's no doubt they're breaking records from billboards to backing awards, but even if they've now entered the doors of Western music, it's silently dominating and infecting the K-pop industry. The K-pop we love, the K-pop we once idolized, is slowly turning into Western music, and fans haven't realized it. That's why in this video, we're going to explain it to you detail by detail, in a way you can easily understand the complicated situation where the West is slowly twisting a knife into the body of K-pop. People see the blood as the sweat of success, but in reality, K-pop culture is dying. Unless you watch this video, you'll be forever blindfolded. This is why America is slowly but devastatingly destroying K-pop culture. First, let's talk about how K-pop evolved. From streets to the world stage. Korea once became a nation under the shadow of mighty China and Japan, and later a playground for Cold War tensions. But three huge moments turned everything around, crafting a new beat in the heart of Korea. First, when Korea shook off Japan's tight grip in 1945, next when the people's voices echoed through the streets in the roaring 80s, bringing democracy alive, and then when everything seemed to fall apart in 1997 during the money meltdown. Something magical was brewing, something big. This was the start of the Korean wave, or Hallyu, a tsunami of cool music, dramas, and fashion that had everyone talking. There, the first generation of K-pop was born and kicked off with a bang, all thanks to legendary Seo Taiji and boys, inspired by West Western pop and flashy Japanese idols. They mixed up a musical potion so fresh and fierce that it rocked Korea's music scene. They were weaving magic with rap and rock, selling a whopping 1.5 million records in less than a month. And the names, Xinhua, Seshkis, SES, G.O.D., Turbo, and solo stars like Rain, Boa, Lee Hyori were the pioneers and trailblazers of K-pop. They are the original heroes. And in the 2000s and 2010s, we're smack in the middle of K-pop's second generation. This era was like a supernova of talent, exploding with groups like Wonder Girls, Big Bang, 2NE1, Girls Generation, Super Junior, and Shinny. But the very beginning of K-pop's world domination started in 2008 when the Wonder Girls, Nobody, did the unthinkable, landing on the Billboard Hot 100s. Sure, it took an American remix, an English version, and a tour with the Jonas Brothers, but hey, they broke through. But also, this is the start of K-pop losing its own culture. You see, U2 played a crucial part in K-pop success. Their music leaped across oceans, creating fans in places no one expected. And then in 2012, Sai's Gangnam Style exploded. Nobody saw it coming, but this catchy tune and wacky dance broke YouTube, literally. And as we zoom into the third generation, social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter, and Naver joined the party alongside YouTube. This was the time of dazzling music videos, killer dance moves, cool merchandise, and everything K-pop fans could dream of. Groups like EXO, GOT7, BTS, Blackpink, Twice, G-Friend, and Red Velvet rode this wave, sharing their tunes across the globe. And this is when K-pop started to drone in success with Western audiences and continuously losing its true essence. So today we're witnessing the talents of the fourth generation like Stray Kids, Etiz, G-I-D-L-E, TXT, Itzy, N-Hypen, Aespa, Ive, Lasaferim, and New Jeans. Saving the best for last, by the way. K-pop continues to drown deeper and deeper into the ocean of Western music. The consequences of success in the Western market. Your favorite K-pop idols are no longer just on stage. They're in your phones, your home, Homes, dancing right into your lives through social media. In 2021, K-pop videos on TikTok skyrocketed to a jaw-dropping 97.87 million, triple the number from 2019. New K-pop groups are now sprinting to their Western debuts faster than ever. Imagine they're launching their Western albums nine months quicker and holding overseas concerts over a year earlier than the groups before them. This speed is why the sensational Aespa wowed us at the 2021 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, a first for a K-pop girl group, and why ITZY rocked their first US show in less than a year. Now, K-pop's always had a sprinkle of English in its catchy tunes, but these fourth-gen stars are shaking up the scene, blending Western beats into their music like never before. Take G-Idol, for example, swaying from the trap beats of La Tata to the spicy sounds of Senorita, then jumping to the cool synth pop of Hua. These were musical bridges, connecting east to west, but this kind of blend could transform into a devastating blow for K-pop culture because K-pop is becoming much more westernized. Ever since K-pop tunes started rocking speakers in the west, South Korea's economy has been dancing all the way to the bank. A massive wave of these fans is from the 
West, pouring in support and love, and of course, the Green Box. K-pop idols are spinning more records in the West than in the East. Take Spotify, for example. It dropped a beat and revealed that the USA tops the charts in streaming K-pop. The music fever is spreading like wildfire across other Western countries, too. And with these places having way more people than South Korea, hitting it big in the US means a whole lot more years jamming to the beats. But K-pop is changing, and just to hit the high notes in Western markets, K-pop's getting a makeover, tuning into what the West wants to hear. The hot water and coffee beans. Let's pretend the K-pop is hot water, and Western music is a coffee bean. A coffee bean, when not touching the hot water, has an aroma so good you can't stop sniffing it. That's Western music for you, and K-pop is a tsunami of hot water, waving and targeting the Western audience. The coffee bean. You see, water is formless, always adapting to its environment and surroundings, and K-pop is much like that. As we see it now, K-pop is adopting everything from the Western culture and language. Remember the song Dynamite by BTS and On the Grounds by Rose? They're all in pure English. You can pause this video, go to their music videos, and notice the way they look. Do you see any Korean culture or K-pop elements in them? Bet you don't, because again, they're like water, adopting and shaping themselves just to fit their target audience. And that's one of the most devilish and powerful ways of seducing your audience. Act like them, speak like them, and they'll automatically like you. And the best part is, they will love you. We human beings are all narcissists. We love people like us, we appreciate people who like things that we like, and we're much more talkative with people who appreciate our beauty. And K-pop is using this tactic to attract Western audiences. And while it seems that it's working throughout the process, K-pop is starting to lose its culture, the Korean style, and the very essence of K-pop music, its identity. K-pop has become much more of a business than an art. And it's very sad that soon enough, whether we like it or not, K-pop will only be known as coming from South Korea. But nothing from its music will represent K-pop itself because it will have become Western music in a K-pop disguise. And that's what will happen happen if hot water, K-pop, meets the coffee bean, Western audiences. The water becomes polluted with the aroma and color of the coffee, right? The color and aroma of Western music is starting to populate K-pop. Side of the stands. After one stand posted on Reddit saying, targeting of American audiences is kind of ruining K-pop, many fans jumped in, sharing their own beats and thoughts. One said, the K-pop industry is just catering to the people who seem to be giving revenue. It's the same thing as them doing Japanese versions of songs and doing exclusive things for the Japanese fans specifically. Another one replied, what I dislike is when a group has a particularly exciting or unique sound in Korean songs, but when they release English songs, those songs are bland, generic, and lacking in identity. Generic and catchy is okay. Whatever, however, some songs are just plain bad, uninteresting, and uninspiring. Another one agreed and said, Although K-pop has had a Western influence since the beginning, their promotion to the Western market has been very severe over the past years. That makes everyone think K-pop is somehow fading in their own flavor. And one countered, As a longtime fan, I find that K-pop is now better than ever. The music, MVs, content, tours, everything. So I don't see it getting ruined by anything. And yes, earlier in this video, we said that the West is slowly destroying K-pop because, after all, K-pop is one of the biggest enemies of Western music companies. And maybe they're just waiting for K-pop to make the mistake of fully adopting Western culture to the point that you can't recognize whether it came from K-pop or Western music. But this is just our take, and now it's your turn to let us know what you think about K-pop right now, so leave your thoughts in the comment section below.